What if you're at a church that doesn't even have screens in your auditorium? Where do you start? We'll talk about it today. Ministry leader, welcome to this episode of Your Visuals Matter. In this podcast, we're talking directly to ministry leaders, you, who are looking for creative ways to visually communicate the gospel to your church or through your organization. And we're defining your church visuals as your graphics and video, the visual media that you put on your screens, big and small. Now, you might not have a creative media team. You might have a team, but they may be drowning in the amount of work needed, or you might be part of that overwhelmed team. You might be drowning right now just trying to catch your breath and get any air possible. If this is you, you are in the right place. In this season of the podcast, we're going to continue to work through some basics of how to use visual elements to tell the story of the gospel at your church or through your ministry. In order to reach the people you want to reach in your community, your visuals matter. All right, so let's jump in. The last two episodes of the podcast have been very foundational. We looked at how the Bible visually communicates the gospel. And then last week, we looked at creativity through the Christian church over the years. And this week, we're going to move into the practical steps for our time. I'm going to go to a lot of conferences this coming year, and I've been to a lot of conferences uh, over the last few years, and I'm surprised by the number of people from churches that I talk to that tell me that you don't even have screens installed in your sanctuary or your auditoriums, and that it's not a priority uh, for them or on the radar at all to purchase screens and projectors. And when I ask them what audience they're trying to reach, usually it's the same answer from the same churches. It's, we want to reach young families, families with young children, students, college students. And those two things honestly don't really go together. As of this recording, I'm 40 years old with two kids. Uh, One is 11 and one is 13, two uh, two young boys, 11 and 13. Uh, and we're not probably not going to go to a church if you don't have screens in your church. If you're not using visual media, engaging graphics and video on your screens, we're probably not going to stay. So where do you start? Who do you need to talk to? Where do you start to get quotes? How, how much should you expect to spend on projectors and gear, software, computers, all of that? We're going to dive into all of that and more right after this. Hey friends, this week I'm talking with Mike Consolo. Mike is the Media and Technical Arts Director at Agape Gospel Mission. Mike is a husband and a father of three. He also has years of experience in the tech world. He's been living in Ghana, West Africa for about eight years now, serving the kingdom through Agape Gospel Mission. He's an experienced church tech expert not only in U.S. churches, but around the world. He knows how to start from scratch, and he knows how to use what you have and work into what you need. Here's my conversation with Mike Consolo. Mike, how you doing, man? Thanks so much for joining me. Good, good, good. Good to see you, Carl. Man, so tell me a little bit about your ministry experience. Where does God have you now? Where have you been the last few years? So I've been in ministry most of my life. Um, I'm a PK, so you don't, you never really, you never really escape it as PKs a PKs unite. Yeah, so Let's it's go. just it is what it is, and you you keep doing it. Um, but as far as like professional ministry and that type of thing, uh, I would consider that 2007. 
Um, I was at a church for about four years in uh, Leesburg, Virginia, and left there in 2011. Uh, got married, kind of married into missions, and so we've been on the mission field kind of ever since. So, hmm. um, you know, I handle anything technical from graphics to video to IT and building projects, and more recently, kids ministry. So. Yeah. So I know that you kind of have experience both in church world and kind of guerrilla mission field world also, right? Yes. Um, yeah. When, yeah, coming to Ghana was a, uh, uh, moving to Ghana was a big, um, shift for me mentally <laughs> as it would be for anybody. Um, uh, the cross cultural, um, way things have gone is, is it, it took me a while. It probably took me two years to really kind of, um, rethink things and, and how, how that, how that works. Um, so, so and, and yeah, you guys are in Ghana now, right? And how long have you been? Yes. There? Um, we've been here. Um, I mean, I've been with Agape for almost 12 years. Um, we've been in and out of Ghana at, at different times. We actually got stuck in COVID in the States for about nine months. Mm. Um, but, uh, cause Ghana had some of the strictest lockdown, uh, wow. restrictions, um, so we couldn't get back. Uh, but, uh, for the most part, we've been here pretty much full time, um, save for a few instances here and there, but for the most part, yeah, we're here. Yeah. So for people who don't know, what is a gosp- uh, agape gospel mission? What do you guys do? With so, uh, yeah, agape gospel mission is, we're an independent missions organization, uh, with a bunch of different churches that support us. Um, and AGM is kind of like an umbrella for a a bunch of little ministries underneath. Well, I say little, that's relative. Um, so there's AGM, then Agape House New Testament Church, then Agape Children's Home, Agape Academy, Agape Bible College, of which I'm an academic dean now. Um, and so it kind of, yeah, it just balloons out from there. Yeah, yeah. So what is your main role with them now? Um, I'm the, the technical arts director um, and special projects director. Um, so, which pretty much means I am whatever you need me to be whenever you need me to be it. (laughs) Right. Um, Right. Duties as assigned. Yes. I got you. All right. So you have experience helping churches and ministries and with your time at Agape, uh, really use what they have to reach the people that they're trying to reach. That's one thing I really love about what you do is, um, you've been in multiple situations where you've had to use what you have to make it work. Um, so tell me maybe about some of the primitive, for lack of a better word, uh, situations that you've been in over the years in from a technology standpoint and screens and that Uh, that sort of thing. Yeah. So at a copy, we didn't always have like led screens and TV screens everywhere, which we have now. Um, when I came on board, uh, in 2012, our building was unfinished. We, there was open areas. It's all concrete, which is just a noise. It, it was just, it's a horrible for noise. Um, and they had one 3000 loom projection, uh, projector, and it was at about a 45 degree angle on the floor aimed up at the ceiling about, I don't know, 20 or 30 feet up on one small patch of square that in it. And then the whole building was just, completely windows pretty much for all downstairs and upstairs. And the sun just so happened to rise through the back at our nine o'clock service, which is our most popular service. Mm -hmm. And the sun just shines right through. So you really couldn't see anything. Uh, The projector wasn't doing much. Um, It tried, (laughs) but you can't compete with the sun. Um, So we had to make a lot of adjustments with that and blocking out some windows and uh, rethinking, okay, (laughs) we need a brighter projector and, and things like that. And in the States, uh, I'll often help local churches around if I'm stateside. Um, I do some side hustle with a few churches, uh, to, you know, uh, fill in some funding gaps and stuff and some cold consulting on the side. So, um, I handle one church, um, that is 176 years old. Yeah. Mm. And, um, so I handle their online pre-filmed service. They send me all the stuff. I edit it and send it back. But when I'm stateside, I'll do physical work for them. Their building is obviously really old. Um, it's, uh, it's, um, the way it's set up is just, it's gnarly. 
Um, the crawl space is probably about one foot and uh, running mm. cables and, and things like that. And so I, I, I got them set up with a couple of uh, a television screens. Their venue is small. It's tight. So having a projector wasn't quite the throw distance you wanted. So I was like, get a couple of TVs. Let's get a HDMI splitter and run it back to a laptop. And um, we got them a, a like a Behringer. I think it's a Behringer X with the iPad. And so they can control sound from wherever. Um, uh, but it's only about three or four staff members, I think, on, at that church, and I think only one full time. Um, and uh, so there, I've worked with pretty much um, everything. And the church I was at before in um, the states in 2007 to 2011, we were a mobile church. We were in a school, so we were constantly adapting to, you know, the rooms locked. We have to do a different room, or there's no TV in here, or there's no, you know, what 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 a spare equipment do we have if any and where can we put it right okay so let's kind of start from scratch if i don't have a screen if i don't have a projector in my space where should i start i want to be very very elementary uh, okay. i was telling you before we jumped on that i've been to two conferences recently uh, which this is not a, an uncommon thing to hear but uh, just i've heard it a lot in the last month or two uh, and that like, I, I have no, there's no screens in my room or mm -hmm. I might be a kid's director mm -hmm. and that, you know, big church has screens. We don't have screens or I might have to roll in a TV and I'm hooking my personal laptop up and trying to figure it out there. So start from very basics. If I have no screens, mm -hmm. what are some of the first things that I should start thinking about? Um, first thing, um, Determine your why. Why do you need a screen in the room? Um, I think for kids' ministry, it's pretty obvious. Um, kids are glued to screens constantly. I know my kids all have tablets that, you know, of course, I restrict their, their time on it, but that's a whole other story. But, um, you know, you got to figure out why do you need the screen? What's, what purpose is going to serve and how is it going to move things forward for your children's ministry? Um, for us, we've, I mean, um, if you're doing real basic, um, you know, if it were me, like I know at my parents' house at home in the States, they, there is a television literally in every single room. They do not need six televisions. <laughs> um, for me, I would ask and say, Hey, look, if somebody has a spare TV in a spare bedroom that they're not using like six, nine months out of the year, they don't even turn it on or they forget they even have it can I borrow your TV or can, can I buy it from you or that type of thing? I would do, I would start there um, at least with something small. Um, if it's a larger space and you need a projector, you can get um, some cheapo projectors for about 60 bucks on Amazon. I don't normally recommend that, but if you're starting from square one, start somewhere and work your way up. Um, yeah. <laughs> what about using, um, what what about the the computer? So so if it's a you know we, we've we've provided some type of TV in there, whether that's a permanent that we can mount to the wall, or mm -hmm. some type of projector, whether that's portable or permanent, do I bring my own laptop or do I save up? I mean maybe at first, but do I save up and what kind of computer do I need? Um, I would. I mean. Starting with your own laptop is great, but risky, especially in kids. Um, <laughs> the, there's always juice flying somewhere. Um, and uh, But if you save up for a laptop, I would start maybe in the uh, go up to maybe the $500 range. Asus has a good option for a couple. We, we use these at Agape House. I found them a few months ago, and we needed one that had a dedicated graphics card, and it was about 500 bucks, which is not too bad, um, all things considered. And it runs, we run ProPresenter 6 because we find it easier for our kids ministry to run that. And um, so something like that that's basic um, will will do wonders and last you a long time. Hmm. Good. Okay. All right, let's roll back for just a second. Who should I talk sure. to when it comes to projectors projectors. If I want to put a projector in, where do I start to go to get quotes for screens, projector installation, stuff like that? Give me some first steps. If there's anybody technical in your church, talk to them. Uh, if you have a TD, but if you're a small church and you don't have a tech director or anybody, that type of stuff, my recommended places to start. Um, 
I love all pro systems, CCI solutions, Sony Faith is great, BH Video, AE Global Media. These are all places I would start to do my research. And that and YouTube. YouTube is a huge help for understanding, okay, what kind of space do I have? How much space do can I use with a projector? And how, you know, what's lumens? How many lumens do I need? How bright is my room? Um, so those are places I would kind of start to get my basic information and stuff like that, especially YouTube is extremely helpful. Um, you know, I, I often, if a staff member comes to me and asks me a question, I'm just like, D well, did you Google it first? And, and, uh, if they say no, I said, like, go Google it. And then, then ask me again, if, if you can't figure it out. Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, there's tons out there on, on YouTube. They can get a tons of information from, but again, if you're looking for a company to help, to help out, definitely. I would check out any of those. Okay. All right. So uh, you mentioned YouTube. So uh, one of the things that I've, you know, that I've heard that that's kind of a common problem. I don't want to be the police on this all the time, but is hooking up my laptop and playing YouTube on a TV. If I'm a kid's pastor or something like that. So talk to me about the, maybe some of the legality of that and why I shouldn't use YouTube. I would not use YouTube for a number of reasons. One, ads. Um, ads are just ridiculous. Um, uh, I know in Ghana, the ads are, are really bad here. Um, I don't even allow my kids to have YouTube or watch YouTube here because the ads are, are horrendous, for one. Number two, um, licensing-wise, you don't know what kind of trouble you're going to get in with broadcasting stuff to people. And um, I just wouldn't even mess with it. Uh, for me, I'm just like, it's a no-go. It's a non-starter. Um, it, my go-to for a lot of stuff, if I need a good worship music and stuff like that, I would go to, uh, uh, Life Church, uh, from, uh, out of Oklahoma. They have, all their stuff is free. Mm -hmm. Their music's free and all that kind of stuff. And they have the right licensing and all that kind of stuff. And you can actually do it through a, Ro a Roku and things like that nowadays. Um, that's a simple solution, a cheap solution to be able to get, um, uh, decent curriculum and stuff and, and worship your skin. But YouTube is great for, I think, for if you want to learn stuff, but not for if you're going to run. We we had this problem here where people were just running YouTube videos on the TV and I was like, we got to stop. <laughs> we can't yeah. do this. Um, it's terrible. And it, it, yeah, it's, yeah, it's a non-starter. Good. I'm glad we made a distinction there between go to YouTube for training and things like that, but not to air stuff in your not for your broadcast. Space. Yeah. Mm -mm. Nope. Okay. So That's let's it. jump back to computer. I think your five hundred dollar, you know, laptop solution is a good solution. Should I work myself up to an iMac, something like that for my space? <laughs> I would highly recommend iMac. You don't necessarily have to, um, but I would. Me, I, I grew up with PCs. I grew up building PCs and that kind of stuff. Made the switch to Mac um, uh, later on. N not too late on, but um, I still work in both realms. And recently, uh, once I got into it between the two, it's, it's about the same. I do find that the Macs run a little bit better. Um, yeah. So I would recommend for reliability, uh, definitely the Macs. But if you can't, I mean, I would, I mean, the cheapest iMac is what, 1200 bucks. That's not too shabby. Um, yeah. I know we run a couple of them in our production department on Sundays. Um, so they're, they're nice to have. I know back in the day, they were quite a bit more, especially depending on space and stuff like that. Definitely get yeah. yourself an external hard drive for storing media. Yeah. Um, uh, unless you have the, the money to pay for extra space. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think. But yeah, you can definitely to... work up to an iMac. I would highly recommend it for stability. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So you're looking at twelve to fifteen hundred dollars there, probably. All right. Who should I look to to yeah. set up my computers and software? Especially if I'm sure you know, if I have a tech guy at my church, uh, that would probably be the first line of defense. But if not, if I'm looking for uh, someone to help set up my computers, the companies that you mentioned, AE Global. Places like that, are they going to be good for helping me set up my computers and software as well? They can be. Um, they can be helpful if it's if that's part of what you want help with. And I think you'd have to arrange that with them and say, hey, I'm buying this projector. Can you help me with that? Nine times out of 10, they're going to be happy to help you, I would think, to help set those things up. They may charge for it. I don't actually know offhand. Um, 
I do, we do a lot of our training in house. Um, in fact, we use the, I use a lot of the salt videos and salt you for mm-hmm. our video training and stuff like that, that we use that heavily. I put in a couple of courses in there for my guys here. We're like, and until you go through all these courses, I can't let you on a camera. I can't let you do that right. until you go through that and, you know, through the training, get the basics down. Um, but for setting up the computers and software, yeah, find a teenager that's willing to learn. Um, definitely. Um, we have with our agape children's home, we have a lot of of teens now, um, that are coming through the program and these kids are sharp and I'm just like, come on, let's go. And we'll, we'll sit down and walk them through stuff. And, um, they're they're just naturals at it they just they have a knack for it they're great at it now if there's usually at least one teenager in every church somewhere along the way so you find find your kid and if and if they're not technical then um again back to youtube back to salt you um those types of things um and then with software um definitely i mean i'm looking between the big three pro presenter easy worship or media shout Mm -hmm. uh for me Yep, I agree. That's what uh, we recommend. One of those those three. All right, all in ballpark numbers here. We're going to talk money. Uh, if I'm looking at installation, projector, screen, computer, software, site license, give me a big, huge, scary number that <laughs> I should expect to spend on all of that for for my maybe big room. Maybe split that into big room and then maybe a kids or student ministry room. Sure. So if you're looking at a larger church, if, you, if you're in a big venue, I would say a thousand to fifteen hundred plus. I would, and you've got a healthy budget. I would say between ten and fifty k uh, would be a good place to start, um, and go from there. Uh, definitely go from that. I mean, prices keep coming down every year on technology. Things are getting cheaper and cheaper. Um, laser projectors are pretty good. Um, but for the most part, LEDs have kind of taken over everything. Um, and, um, I know for us, we, we, we went LED about six years ago, uh, seven years ago now, I think it's been a while, um, here on our big walls and, uh, for smaller churches, I would say between four and five K. And if you're on the lower end of the budget, which I, I think a lot of us tend to be, um, I mean, a lot of churches are small, so, um, going lower in 1500 to 3000 bucks. See what, see what you guys can afford. Uh, definitely. Um, is it worth it to spend the money? Why would I spend yes. that kind of money on, on this stuff? Yes. I, and yeah, uh, it's definitely worth it to spend the money because the longevity and the way technology is, is moving right now. I would definitely invest now. I know for me, like investing in computers and stuff like that, I am, I have bought computers back 11 years ago that are still in our office now um, and still rolling. It is now just now time for me to start replacing those. So I've gotten a decade's use out of one computer alone. um, And I've got a dozen of those in there. And so it's like, okay, it's definitely worth the, the investment. And then with led screens, I mean, you're looking at maybe if, if you do it right, 15 years um, on an led screen and then even televisions, I mean, they're going to last. I mean, it's worth it to me. Uh, it's going to save you money in the long run, especially when it comes between projectors t- and LED TVs or LED wall. Um, projectors have lamps that have to get replaced constantly or, you know, every few thousand hours or something like that. Or if you've got a double lamp, that's another problem. Um, so projectors can get kind of expensive. Um, but uh, that's why I would more recommend the television route um, as big as you can get or afford. Um, and again, it depends on your goals, um, your size of your room. Um, yeah. And are you doing IMAG and and that type of thing? Yeah. It depends on the room. Yeah. Good. So I want to give people options here on if, if you are absolutely have nothing, start with where you are and work your way up. Um, but don't think that it is so far out of reach that just nothing can be done. Would you agree with that? That like, like, I mean, at some point a fundraiser makes sense. I mean, yes. Car wash, bake sale, something like that. (laughs) 
can make sense to to get you where you need. Would you agree? Absolutely. As somebody that does fundraising, um, as missionaries in the field, we do a lot of that. Um, Fundraise. Do as much as you can, as often as you can. Um, And, um, you know, yeah, car and go to local businesses. A lot of local businesses want to partner with local churches or local organizations and are, are willing to help, are ready to help. And um, it's also a good outreach too in that realm because they're like, yeah. oh, that, I didn't know you guys were there. Um, this is great. Now right. you've got a partnership with a business and you can have an ongoing relationship. And, you know, then there's a chance to, you know, maybe share the gospel. Right. Um, so anything you can do to, um, I think reach out to local businesses. And what I've found is that, yeah, even here in Ghana, if I reach out to a local business, like, oh yeah, definitely. We'll, we'll definitely have, we'll, we'll do this or we'll do that. Um, you know, or I'll give you a 20% discount or whatever, something like that. Um, it's always worth it to me. It's better to, better to ask and and Uh know than not know and, and sweat. (laughs) Yeah. And I think a lot of people are maybe stuck in the like, oh, well, it's not going to happen for us. Whereas if you just kind of press in a little bit, I mean, I, it's it's more reachable than you think. And yeah, it, and, and you can get yeah. to some right people in order to install the stuff that you need pretty quickly. Absolutely. I've had um, with a lot of our installations in our church here, um, we I have a handy guy, a handyman that comes to my house frequently here in Ghana. I use him both for my house stuff, for my plumbing and for hanging Mm -hmm. televisions. He knows how to do both. He's a handyman. He knows all kinds of stuff. If you can't go to these uh, larger companies and stuff like that, or, you know, it's not within your budget to do that, find a handyman to come install a TV for you. Better to have it done right and safely than to not do it at all. In my opinion, like have it done right, have it done safe. Um, I've gotten away from doing things personally myself, (laughs) Because uh, I know myself and I'll just want to get it done. And, but I'd rather take somebody and be like, can you hang this up properly for me and and do it the right way? And I want it safe. I don't need a TV falling on a kid or on anybody. I mean, the walls here are concrete, so we're pretty good. Um, But, (laughs) but in the States, I know it's mostly just uh, sheetrock and, you know, you got to hit those studs or (laughs) it's bad news. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Last question for you. Why sure. uh, all of this for a reason, right? Why do your visuals matter? Why are we wanting to put screens, projectors, TVs in rooms to communicate the gospel visually? Why does it matter? Because that is the medium today we're in. Screens are everywhere. I mean, I've, I've, my kids are, we homeschool. They have, they do a Becca, they have their laptops, they're on their screens. They have their iPads in the afternoon to watch like one or two shows, like kids, adults, everybody's on screen. I know I'm on my phone all the time, um, with just dealing with WhatsApp messages and things like that. Screens are everywhere and they're going to vie for your attention. They're going to get your attention. Um, and so I feel like screens and, uh, your visuals matter and what you put on them matters because this is kind of the way things are, are, well, not kind of, it is the way things are going. And I think it's important that we embrace that technology, use it as a tool to uh, facilitate the gospel and move and move things forward. And it matters what it looks like too. I mean, it, it really does. And, um, you know, Why? things. Why does it matter if it looks good or bad? For me, um, it, you know, when you see bad and you know, when you see good, and now we're not going to compete against a company like Disney and Marvel and all that and their graphics and that kind of stuff. I know that, but there are steps we can do. And, and, and like we, we buy tons of backgrounds, quality backgrounds, high quality backgrounds, 4k backgrounds. We will go to the ends of the earth to get quality media and quality things in order to, again, move the gospel forward. It's, 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 to me, it's imperative that you have quality stuff. And, and cause if, if, if you're putting out something that's not quality, people are going to be like, eh, and you're going to lose them pretty quick. You, I mean, you've got <laughs> three to 10 seconds to grab somebody and online. I'm I, nowadays, I don't even know how long it's probably even shorter, probably like 0.3 seconds or something, but yeah. it's, you have, you know, you have just, one first impression with somebody the first time you've got just one, you know, you've got one chance to make a good impression. And I feel like having that, those qual- that quality media is extremely important. And, um, it's something I will always push for. And, uh, 
in, in media and stuff like that. I've always want to be like, okay, how, you know, how good can we make this with what we have? Good. All right, man. Thank you for your time. How can we pray for you guys in Ghana? What What's on your big prayer list right now? Um, absolutely. We have a conference coming up uh, called lead conference here in October um, where we scholarship pastors in um, uh, and, um, have an entire conference for them. They've got panels and stuff and help encourage pastors. It's pastors, leading pastors. Um, additionally, um, I'm the Dean of the Agape Bible college here and, um, we're growing quickly. Um, in fact, I've had to hire an assistant just to handle <laughs> the extra workload. Um, we're up to 50, 60 students. Now we've, uh, we've got two ladies that just joined us and, uh, we have students from all over, uh, Zambia, uh, Nigeria, Liberia, Sierra Leone, uh, Cote d'Ivoire, um, Togo Benin. Uh, we're like all, we're all, we, we bring pastors in, we train them, get them a, a fully accredited, a fully accredited, um, education, and then we send them back. And then we, we also offer support afterwards. You know, if their church needs something, we also help support that, you know, they need a sound system or they need a projector or they need and things like that. So we're constantly, um, trying to push things forward media wise for them and, and making sure that they're, they're taken care of as well. Yeah. So those are awesome. our two big things right now. Yeah. Well, man, great, great work. Uh, I'm just, um, uh, we're, we're, as a, as a brother, we're proud of you guys. Thank you for all your work on the mission field. Uh, thank you for your work around the world, helping, helping churches and especially where you are there in Ghana, man. Uh, really appreciate that. And, uh, and thank you for your time today. Well, thank you so much, Carl. I appreciate it. I like being on, uh, this is my first podcast, so <laughs> it's a yeah. different experience. So it's, it's been yeah. fun. Awesome. Thank you, man. All right. Thanks. Appreciate it. Hey, ministry leader, you and your team may be feeling overwhelmed with all of the visual media needs at your church. Your visuals matter. So I'd like to invite you to take a look at our ready-made media library at churchvisuals.com. It's packed with over 30,000 pieces of media for your adult, kids, or student ministries. Mini movies, series media, ministry graphics, theme packs, and more. All instant downloadable visuals ready for you to drop in this Sunday. Start downloading today at churchvisuals.com. That's churchvisuals.com. Hey friends, as we wrap this week's episode, I want to give you one clear, concise takeaway. So here's your church visuals tip of the week. Our culture is visual. You need screens in your environments. According to data collected by the company Statista, there were over 3.5 billion internet users watching streaming or downloaded video at least once per month in 2023. This number is projected to increase annually. In quarter four of 2022, it was reported that online videos had an audience reach of 91.8% among internet users worldwide. 82% of global internet traffic in 2022 came from video. So what all does this mean for us? It means that video is by far the number one way that we consume content. If you are not using video on your screens at your church, you're missing an opportunity. If you want to reach the people that you want to reach for Jesus, your visuals matter. And I want you to hear this in love. Don't hear me coming down on your church that you don't have screens or that you're not up with the times. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is visuals matter to our culture today. Video is how we consume content. So if you want to reach young families, video is one major way to do that. Great graphics, great media content on your screens at your church is a great way to do that. So make steps in the right direction to get screens in your church. Be sure to like this episode of the show, if you would, and leave a comment. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel, and you can follow us on social media at Church Visuals. I'll see you next week. Your Visuals Matter has been a podcast presentation of Church Visuals. Executive produced by Carl Barnhill, edited by A.J. Schubert, title and show graphics by Angie Lomas. For more resources to help you visually communicate the gospel, visit churchvisuals.com.
www.thepowerhouse.com.